Hello, I'm Josue Kirk. I'm a fourth year student in Pure Math and Common Towards and Optimization. And today I'm joined by the head actuarial science advisor, Alice Hanov. And I'll get her to introduce herself quickly. So hi, Alice. <laughs> Well, thank you. Um, as you said, my name is Alice and I am the Head Actuarial Science Advisor in the Department of Statistics and Actuarial Science. And I have been the Actuarial Science Advisor for the last 13 years. Wow, a long time. <laughs> and now I'm sure the question that's on everyone's mind right now is what is actuarial science? What is it actually all about? <laughs> So simply put, actuarial science is using math to look at risk. So it's done mainly with purposes of things relating to finance and insurance. But the easiest way to sum up actuarial science is that you're going to be using math to analyze risk, which in this world is everywhere. <laughs> That's very true. Risk is everywhere. And in particular, even for students who are choosing actuarial science, there's a risk in declaring that as their major. So is there anything that you kind of wish students knew before they chose actuarial science as their major? Yes, there are a couple of things that we really want students to be aware of when they're picking actuarial science. So a lot of students gravitate to actuarial science because it is one of the less stressful and high income jobs that you can get with mathematics, but there's some very important facts you want to remember with actuarial science. Unlike things like statistics or pure math where you can kind of do the degree and you're done, actuarial science requires professional exams that are typically written outside of your studies in order to progress in the job itself. So it's a career where you will take what you learn at university, add in professional exams, and then add in work experience. And this will determine where you fall on that growth of your career. The other thing to be aware of is because it's got this growth and it's very competitive, communication skills are critical. We actually are the only program that has a separate second communications course for our students that is designed specifically for our students. And I always joke that its purpose is to teach you to talk actuarial science and statistics to people who are not in actuarial science and statistics. So you could explain the program to your grandmother kind of thing. So the main takeaway for you is if you do not want to have to keep writing exams after you graduate, then actuarial science is probably not the field for you. While we do have an accreditation program through the Canadian Institute of Actuaries with the university, if you do not plan to work in Canada, you will need to write the American body, the Society of Actuaries professional exams. And most people finish those exams by the time, if you want to be a fellow and finish all the exams, you're looking at 27 to 42 as the age range for doing that. So just know if you like XI, that's fantastic. But if you don't want to write exams when you're done school, probably a different field is best for you. You need to like XI and you also need to like writing exams, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. And now writing exams, I'm not sure how most people feel about this, but honestly, they're a little boring for me. So then maybe what are some of the exciting things about actuarial science that we could talk about instead? <laughs> Sure. Um, one of the great things about actuarial science is it's a very broad field. Like we said, it's analyzing risk. So a great part about it is once you've gotten through those exams, you have a lot of options available to you when you get into the workforce. There is um, different streams that you can follow to be a fellow. A fellow is the top rank in the professional bodies, both in the American and the Canadian. And that middle tier between kind of new person and expert is called an associate. And until you hit associate, you just are actuarial science. But from associate to fellow, that's when you're really picking the meat and the guts of what you want to be doing with it. And the nice thing with AXI is there are seven career different areas that you can head down. Some are finance, some are insurance, some are, I call them other things like pensions or reinsurance or consulting. And the advantage there is you have a lot of choice. There's all these fields that are available to you. So even if you start out in one and you decide, wow, pensions is not really my thing, or you realize after a few years you're not enjoying it there are many other things you can do with that degree that you can pivot and still make complete use of your degree so that's a very exciting thing and the other advantage for actual science is like i said before it's often ranked as a job that is very low stress and very high income. So it tends to be one that ends up on like top 10, top 20 careers. And with the way risk is going in our world right now, it's not one that seems to be going anywhere. <laughs> so <laughs> if anything, places where you did not find actuaries before now have actuaries working for them. So it's also one that is very in demand, which is exciting when you're studying something that you know is going to get you a job when you graduate, as opposed to something that you're not quite sure where you're gonna go.
Yeah, it's a comforting fact to know that uh, you're going to be employed afterwards. <laughs> and now uh, you've touched on this a little bit, but my next question is about the career opportunities uh, if you become an actuary. Obviously, you'll probably become some form of actuary, but can you elaborate on some of the few different options you've mentioned? Absolutely. So, well, we'll talk about the seven kind of paths you can head down to become a fellow because that seems to be what most students are shooting for is that fellow job. So the first one is consulting. And that's where you can work in all different industries. That's where you end up being an actuary in a place that didn't necessarily have actuaries five years ago. So consulting is a very popular option. There's the different insurances. So these are each their own stream. There's life insurance, there's property and casualty insurance, which is often referred to as PNC. And then there's reinsurance. And reinsurance actually confuses people. It's the insurance, the insurance companies buy on their insurance. <laughs> So yes, that is the thing. It's not just you buy life insurance, I buy car insurance. The insurance company then buys insurance on my insurance. So that if suddenly a storm goes through Waterloo and everybody's car gets ruined in one week, they can have their insurance company pay them so they can pay me. This is how prepared actuaries are. They are insured on their insurance. <laughs> The other area is pensions, which I touched on as well. So if you want to go work for the like a big employer is different pensions companies like the Toronto Teachers Pension Plan. Banking tends to hire people to work on their pensions and either you work in the pensions itself or you come up with new products that can be sold to people for pensions. And then the other areas are more finance related. The two main ones are corporate finance and enterprise risk management. So these are people who want to go work in like banking, come up with the investments people want to buy, this sort of thing. And then quantitative finance and investments, which is a little bit more on the theoretical side, a little bit more advanced. Awesome. Uh, so it sounds like there's tons of different things you can do. Yes. You weren't lying about that. Uh, and so you've talked a lot about how uh, many of these jobs are related to finance, but maybe you could elaborate on some of the ways that actuarial science is different from mathematical finance as an example. Certainly. So with math finance specifically, um, math finance is designed to be a program that is more theoretical. At the University of Waterloo, actuarial science is created to make you an actuary. Our professors have put together a program that even the, regardless of what the different societies say you need, our professors, who some of which have written the textbooks used by these societies, are telling us what you need to be a good actuary, to graduate and be useful in the industry. So we make our program so that we actually are benefiting the industry as a whole. But the point for that is we're teaching you what you need to be an actuary, not to then go and do something else kind of random off to the side. Mathematical finance is designed to be more theoretical in the finance world. So it actually combines actuarial science with statistics and pure mathematics. And when I say combines, I mean it takes the hardest of all three of those and expects you to take the advanced math courses in first and second year. And then when you graduate with math finance, I find most of those students move on to something like a master's. They end up doing more theoretical research in things like our quantitative finance master's program that we have. Whereas in actuarial science, you have that career path kind of laid out for you. Now, like I said before, there are seven paths you can follow, but you've got that big highway that takes you to that fork in the road with those seven careers. And when you start down actuarial science, you know you're going to be an actuary. That's your goal. But with math finance, you have a little bit more play there. And then another one that students often ask about is what is the difference between farm and actuarial science, which is another very finance heavy program. And I steal this from Peter Blake, one of the farm advisors, because I think it's the most simple and brilliant way to just differentiate between actuarial science and farm. Actuaries use risk to save your company money. So they're going to use insurance. They're going to protect you. Farm students use risk to make people money. They're going to do the investments that are going to make you get 20% returns as opposed to 1% returns. So that's a good way to think about it. If you want to use risk to save people money and protect things, you want to be an actuary. If you want to use risk to make people money and make the big bucks on Wall Street, you want to go into farm. And now uh, that's going to wrap it up for all the questions I have for you. But if students have further questions, is there a way they could contact you or another advisor? Yes, absolutely. In our department, we actually have seven different advisors. Um, so we have one big email that you can email and get all of us. You have everything from the head stats and AXI advisors to uh, advisors who have just gone through the fellowship exams for the Society of Actuaries and also new advisors who are experts in being able to tell you what you need to declare and how our courses are running and that sort of thing. The email you want to use is sasugrad 
ADV at uwaterloo.ca. And if you forget, if you go on our SAS uwaterloo.ca website and under current undergrads, academic advising, it's the top button right there that you can just click and it'll send it to us. And then whichever advisor is best able to answer your question is the one who's going to get your email. Awesome. Well, a lot of great things in there, a lot of good advice. So thank you so much for joining me and answering all these questions. Uh, yes. And if there's one thing I can leave with students, take the risk and go into yes. actual science. <laughs> <laughs> True, yes.